Hi guys, it's Sherry. I hope that you're having a fantastic day. Y'all, it is a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Stay tuned. Welcome to all of my new subscribers and welcome to everyone. I am so thankful that you're choosing to spend some of your day with me. Today, we are going to do something absolutely amazing. And here's what we're making today. So those of you who have been with me for a while, you know that I love making purses, boxes, and bags. And this is a purse that I think you guys are going to enjoy as well. When finished, it measures eight by six and it's three inches deep. This is a perfect purse for taking to a 4th of July barbecue. Now, we talk about it all the time that we can make these for any season. And we can. We simply need to change out the pattern of whatever it is we're using and it becomes an any season purse. So Christmas, change that paper, make it for Christmas. This will be super simple to make. Now I'm not going to spend any more time talking because y'all know what time it is. It's time to make it. All right y'all, so here is my 4th of July bag. And this is what I mean by any season because we can make these bags for any occasion. It's as simple as finding an occasion themed cover. And in this case, I found this beautiful red, white, and blue table runner. Yes, it does have some green in it, but predominantly what you see is the red, white, and blue. And then I used some paper on the side with blue and white polka dots because I thought that that really did make this little bag stand out. I added my metal feet to the bottom. I used some scrap table runner to make my handles. And then we have a really sweet inside because this is double-sided paper. So here's what we're going to need to make this. What are you using? Paper, vinyl, table runner, wallpaper, wrapping paper, whatever it is, this is what you're going to need. So I have two pieces that measure two and a half by three. I have two pieces that measure 12 by one and a half. I have my chipboard and I'm using a medium weight. And my first piece measures eight and a quarter by three. Then I have two pieces that measure eight and a quarter by six. And then I have two pieces of cardstock. You can use a medium weight to a heavy weight if you want. And this measures nine by 12. Then I have this beautiful table runner that I have cut down. And the piece that I have here is 18 by 13. So if you want to join papers to get this length, you can, but your project will actually look better if you're using some type of sheet material that will give you one continuous piece. And this red and white paper is actually a Valentine's paper. So on the inside it has XOXO. I'm totally okay with that. So we're going to do something a little different from what you guys normally see me do when we join two pieces together. So here's what we need to do. On the 12 inch side of one of your pieces, you need to score at one, Rotate it to the opposite 12 inch side and score at three. Then we're going to rotate it to the nine inch side and we're going to score at three. So then we'll take our second piece of 12 by nine and we're going to score at one and then we'll rotate it and we'll score at three. So we're scoring both pieces at one and at three. And then we're going to turn it to the nine inch side and this time we're going to do something different. We're going to make our score here at six because we want the three inch side to be facing in this direction. When we did it on this piece, we put it in, we put it in on the nine inch and we scored at three and that gave us the three inches this way. This time we want to make sure that we have the three inches this way. So we're going to score at six. And the reason why we're doing this will make sense in just a minute. So we are going to go ahead and fold and burnish all of our scores. So that part that I just showed you on how to score that second piece, you might have to look at that more than once 
to get it. But the reason is going to become very obvious in just a minute on why we actually need to do that. So what we're going to do on this flap, it's one inch. We're going to have a rectangle right here in the corner and we need to remove that all together. So I am just going to cut that out. Like that. Then I'll do the same thing on this one. We have that rectangle in the corner. I am just going to cut it out. And so we have our two pieces like this. So then in this corner, we have this square piece. We're going to open this and just go up to the score mark and simply free up that tab and you can just angle in slightly on that tab. And then we'll do the same thing on this piece. So I'll go up to my score mark, drag straight down, and then I can angle in. So now we have our two pieces that look like this. Now the reason why it was important to score the three inches the way that we did on one of these is because we have two ends that are one inch and two ends that are three inch. So we need to take this piece and rotate it. And when we join it, this is what your project is going to look like. You are going to have your bag joined here. You'll have a one inch flap here, a one inch flap here, a three inch flap here, and a three inch flap here. That's how we put it together. So that is why when you score your first piece, score on the three inch mark. But when you score your second piece and put it in on the 12 inch side, score at six because doing it that way is how we're able to flip the three and the one on both of these so that we can put it together. Now, I hope this makes sense. I've tried to explain it as simply as I can, but like I said, you might have to go back and watch this part a couple of times to make sure that you've got it. So now that we have it ready to put together, I am going to take some glue you can use tape if you want. I just want the wiggle room and the recovery time that I get from using my tape. So now that I have that down, I am going to take this piece and just match it. And y'all, the reason why I'm going through all of this is because I want an eight inch bag and the paper that I was using to make this part of the bag is only 12 inches. So I want an eight inch bag with a three inch body. And that means I had to join papers together in order to be able to actually assemble this bag. Now that we have it like this, I am going to go ahead and just take my glue place it on this flap and I'll put this piece to this piece and I want to make sure that my ends are nice and even right there. Then I'll take my big old spatula, get that nice and stuck. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing over here. I'll bring this piece up. And we're going to do the same thing. And for those of you who are new to my channel, making purses and bags are some of my favorite things to do. So if you haven't checked out some other things on my channel, please do. I know that a lot of you came over for the placemat crafting, but I would love to have you spend some time watching some of my other videos or my newer videos as they come out, even if they're not placemat videos, because by watching those, you really do help me keep my channel going. So then I'm going to take my glue and I'm just going to put it on this one inch flap. like that, then I can take this one inch flap and put my box together. Then I'll go on the inside and I'm just going to get that stuck. So now I'm going to take my glue again, place it on this flap. And we'll take 
take this and we're going to go ahead and match it. And you can see how simple that was. We just had to get through that scoring to get the size that we ultimately wanted. And so I have a box here that measures eight by six and it's three inches deep. So that's a pretty good size. We're going to set this to the side and work on the jacket. So I am going to bring in my 18 by 13 inch piece, my two chipboard pieces that measure eight and a quarter by six and a quarter, and one piece that measures eight and a quarter by three. I have already applied double stick tape to the back. So I am going to peel away that tape and we'll stick this down. So I'll just take that going to put it right there. Then I'll take this piece and I'll put it right here. And I'm using about an eighth of an inch in spacing in between those two pieces. Then I'll take my final piece and I am removing my tape backer and we're going to put it down. So when I put this piece down, I'm putting it down next to this one, giving myself again about an eighth of an inch in spacing. Then I'm going to flip this over and I am just going to make sure that I have everything nice and stuck. And I'm going to take my scissors, cut in at an angle so that I can miter those ends. So you can see that I just cut in at an angle there. And I'll do the same thing here. Ordinarily, I would use my finger blade for this, but I actually, but this is like a burlap material. So that's why I'm using my scissors because I, it catches better with the scissors than it does with my finger blade. And then we'll do our last side. And then I'm also going to trim away the hem here because I don't want that extra bulk. So I'm just going to trim that away. And I'll do the same thing on this side. I'm just removing that hem because I don't want that bulkiness. So now I'm going to take my tape and I'm going to place tape on four sides of this chipboard. I'll get that nice and stuck and now I'll peel away my tape and then we're going to fold over these edges to get them stuck okay so I'm going to take this piece and just fold it over I'll take this side fold it over and then I'll do the same thing with this piece but I also want to take some tape and just add it right there and the reason why I'm doing that is because when we folded this over, we actually covered up some of the tape to keep that stuck. So I'm just going to tear off some tape. And I'm just going to place my tape like that. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that on all four sides. So now I'm going to peel away the tape backer. And now I can take this piece and fold it over and know that it's nice and stuck. And I'll do the same thing over here. So I'll pull this over. We'll get it nice and stuck.
And so now y'all, we have our beautiful little jacket for the bag. I absolutely love how this looks. I know that my flowers are going in crazy directions, but I am okay with that. So now I'm going to bring in my Cropodile Big Bite and it's going to allow me to punch holes through this chipboard. And basically what I'm going to do is I am going to punch four holes so that I can put my feet on. So I'll just come in wherever I want and punch my hole. And so now I'm going to bring in my little purse feet and there will be a link in the description box for these. They're different from what I've normally used. They have the little Phillips head screw on them and then this feet will screw onto that. So I'll take the Phillips head portion and put it through that hole. Then I'll take this piece and screw it on. Then I'm going to flip it over and I am using a little mini screwdriver that comes in an eyeglass repair kit to just take that and tighten it. So I'll do the same thing with all of these. So let's put that one on. We'll turn it. And then to tighten it, I'm going to hold this piece in place with my finger. And then I'll use the Phillips head just to tighten that screw. And I will have a link in the description box for these screws, guys, you don't have to have these if you don't want them. You can actually use thumbtacks as the base. You can use brads. You don't have to have these feet. They even have some of these feet that are made like brads. So there are definitely alternatives to these particular feet. But for those of you who want these feet, I will have them linked in the description box. So I am going to take my little screwdriver and tighten these. So now I have my feet on the bottom of my bag and isn't that sharp. So now that we have this like this, very simple, we're going to take our bag and glue it to the base. That's the first thing that we're going to do. So I am going to add my glue and I'm not going to be stingy with my glue guys. I am going to be very generous with this glue. And I am going to make sure I have glue in the middle and on my ends. And now I'll take this and I'm going to turn this around and I'll just place this down on the spine and I'll check it to make sure that I have equal spacing on both sides of the bag here. Then I'm going to bring up my sides just to make sure that it's not extending over the top and that everything is nice and neat down here in the corner. Once it is, then I'm just going to go in and really start pressing down to get that stick. And so once it dries, that glue really is going to harden and set up very nicely for you. But because we are gluing part of the burlap, that will take a moment. So make sure that you're giving this very good drying time so that you don't ruin your beautiful project. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to lay this on its side and we're going to take our glue and we're going to be very generous with our glue and we're going to cover the bag portion. So make sure that you have plenty of glue right here. And now I can just lay that down and then I'll flip it over. I'm going to go in with my big old spatula and when I go in, I'm going to push the glue this way and push the glue this way because I want to make sure that I have glue all the way to the edge. And 
and then I'll very carefully lift it. We're going to place it on its side here. And we're going to repeat the process. So I am just going to make sure I have my glue all over the place here. And I am being very generous with that glue, guys, because we need for this to stay stuck. So now that I have my glue, I can take this part, lay it down. I'm going to stand it up and do that same thing. So I'm going to go on the inside with my big old spatula and I'm pushing the glue this way and this way. And so once you've done that, your bag is going to look like this. Everything will be nice and stuck. It will just need time to dry. So don't rush it. Please give this at least three or four hours. Let everything dry and harden before you even attempt to carry it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in my paper piercer because I want to go ahead and mark a hole where I'll actually be punching to put down my handles. Then once I have those marks made, I'm going to use my hole punch just to go in and punch the holes. So when I use my paper piercer, I was basically just making a guide for where I needed to punch. All right, so now I can take this and I'm going to set it to the side because we're going to go ahead and make our handles. And to make the handles, I am just going to take my tape and I'm going to place tape from end to end on my strap. some tape on the other side of this as well. So then I'm going to peel away this tape. And I have already made one handle and I'll use that as my guide for making this one. So basically what I'm doing is I'm folding this over into thirds. And now I'll use this piece as my guide and I'm going to place that and then fold that over. And then I'll use my big old spatula to get everything nice and stuck. And then I have already punched holes here in the bottom. So I am going to use my paper piercer to punch these holes as well. So I'm just going to take it, go through that hole that I had already punched. And now I can take this and just open it. And there's my hole. I'll do the same thing on this side. So I'm going to go ahead and just punch. And then I'll just go through and widen that hole. So we'll put those handles on in just a minute. Before we do, we're going to take these pieces that are two and a half by three, and we're going to put them on the sides. That just finishes off the top of this bag really nicely. So I'm going to use my tape. And go ahead and place down some tape. I'll do the same thing with this one. Now 
we can put these down. So I'm going to take my big old spatula and just go over these to make sure that's nice and stuck. So now I can peel away my tape. I can take this piece and I'm going to try to get it straight. So when I put that there and I fold it over, then I just have a nice finish to that. So I still need to allow for my glue to completely set up and dry on these sides and everywhere else on this bag. But I'm going to take this piece, put it down, and we have that side nicely finished. Now we can take this and we can just pinch in those sides. And when we pinch in the sides, we can also just go down the side to help that glue to make sure that it's really sticking. And so now we can apply our handles. I am going to be applying my handles using those screws that have the bubble head on them. And they also have the flat head to screw it in. I'll have these listed in the description box as flat heads. So again, you don't have to have these screws. You can use brads if you want. You do not have to have these screws just because I'm using them. So I need to take my screw, feed it through the hole that's on that strap. And then I can take that screw head and I'll push it through the hole that I made on the bag. And then I'll take my bubble head screw and you can see how that looks from the side and put it on then in that same eyeglass kit you get a flat head screwdriver so i am going to take that flat and i'm just going to go in and tighten that screw and by doing that that's not going anywhere guys. It is on there nice and tight. And then if you do need to tighten your screws anymore, all you need to do is go back in with that screwdriver and tighten it. So I'm going to take my screw and put it through that hole like that. Then I'll take it and we'll punch it through the hole on the inside. We're going to take We'll take that head, put it on, and then I'll take that flat screwdriver and just tighten that screw. Not going anywhere. So now I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm going to take my strap and I'm going to put my strap on just like this. So I'm going to take that screw, put it through the hole, Feed it through the hole that I made on the bag. Take this screw, put it on. Then again, I'll use my flathead screwdriver. Get that nice and tight. And then we'll do the same thing with this one. So let's take that final screw we're going to put it through that hole and then we'll put it through the hole on the bag. Take the head, put it on. And then I'll go on the inside and we'll tighten that flathead screw. And so now we have another absolutely awesome bag for the 4th of July or anytime that you want to carry it. This is so stinking cute. There are steps to it, but it really is easy. And I know some of you say I make it look easy and that's because it is easy. The more you do it, the better you will become at it. So I am going to bring in this first one so that y'all can see just how gorgeous these are. Please make sure that you allow plenty of time for that glue to dry and please make sure that you are using plenty of glue when you're gluing these sides together because you don't want your beautiful bag 
coming undone at the sides. And don't you just love the contrasting papers on the side? I know that I do. I love to work with different patterns because I love how the red plaid actually pulls you to the red in the bag. And then the blue polka dots tie in line with the blue in the bag. So super easy and so stinking cute. So guys, I hope that you have liked this project. And if you have, please hit the like button. If you are not a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you join this amazing online crafting family. You guys, as always, please be safe, be kind, happy crafting, and we'll chat later. Bye.